Right, here we're looking at uh, the sales table and the sales returns book of Nelson Limited. And these are the two books of first entry, and we're going to post or transfer those entries from the books first entry into the ledger. So, posting the sales table and the sales returns book. Now, if we have a look at this, we'll see that uh, four times during September, Nelson Limited sold goods on credit to their customers. On the 2nd and the 25th, they sold goods on credit to McGrath for 1,000 and 3,000 with 100 and 300 euro worth of VAT on them, respectively. So they invoiced uh, McGrath on the 2nd for 1,100 and they invoiced McGrath on the 25th for 3,300. We've sold goods twice to McGrath during the month. We'd send an invoice to them for that. We keep the copy. And we use the copy of the invoice to write up our sales table. And then on the 4th of the 18th, we sold goods on credit to Maloney Limited for those amounts here, plus 10% fat. So in all, for the month of September, we've sold goods on credit to the value of 9,350, made up of goods themselves worth 8,500, plus the 10% fat on it. So that's our sales table. And now we must transfer that information into the ledger. Remember, the ledger is where you keep accounts. So because McGrath and Maloney owe us money, they're debtors and we keep their accounts in the debtors' ledger. We can see there that neither of them owes us any money at the start of the month, but that we've sold each of them goods twice during the month. And remember your rule in uh, this is debit the receiving account, and credit the giver, or the giving account. So because we've sold goods on credit to a grand Maloney, we're going to debit them because they received. They haven't paid us yet, that will be later. We've just sold them goods on credit, they've received, we debit them. So I go to my grand's account, and on September the 2nd, and on the 25th, I write down sales, we sold them goods on credit. I'm getting the information from the sales table. And I sold the first lot of goods for 1100 and these ones for 3300 I debited McGrath twice because McGrath received. And similarly, for Maloney, on the 4th and the 18th, we'll say sales. We're getting this from the sales table. And we'll debit Maloney with 2,200 for the September 4th transaction. And we'll debit them with 2,750 for the sales on the 18th. We've sold goods on credit to Maloney twice, so we're debiting Maloney twice because Maloney received, debit the receiver. We've now done one half of the so-called double entry. We've got our debits done, we have four debits. So we've covered those four. We must match them now with an equal amount of credit entries. So, I'm going to open up two more accounts in the general ledger. I'm a little cut for space, so I'm going to put the sales account here. And I'm going to have a VAT account. So remember, I've debited McGrath and Maloney twice each, so we have four debit entries. And now I must credit the sales account on September the 30th. Sundries, and miscellaneous, 8,500. No VAT included. No VAT, the 8,500. So now I must put the total of the VAT on the credit side of the VAT account. So September 30th, the VAT on the sales, which I got from the sales table, is 850. So we've debited McGrath and Maloney four times because they received, debit the receiver, and I'm crediting the sales account with 8,500 
and then credit into a bank account with 850. So we've got matching credit entries. Finishing the double entry for the sales data. Now we've got the sales returns. Both McGrath and Maloney sent us backwards during the month. McGrath sent us backwards on the 20th. We gave them a credit note for this instead of a refund. We wouldn't give them a refund because they haven't paid us yet. So we give them a credit note, reducing the amount they owe us. McGrath sent back 500 euro worth of goods plus the 50 percent, uh, plus the 10 percent back. The value of the credit note is 5,500, and we gave Maloney a credit note dated September 29th for 7,700. The 700 plus 10 percent back. So McGrath and Maloney have sent us back goods. So we're going to credit them because they're giving. Remember, credit the giver. So I go to McGrath the 20th, September 20th. And we say sales returns. I'm getting this from the sales returns book, and the value of the credit note is 550 euro. You can see here why it's called a credit note. We have credited McGrath's account. You give McGrath a credit note to tell them we are going to credit their account. It reduces the amount that they owe us. And then on the 29th, we do the same for the loan. September 29th, sales returns. I'm getting it from the sales returns book, and the value of the credit note is 770. So, McGrath and Maloney sent us back goods, so we've credited them because they gave. So, I've got the credit side, I've got the credit entries done now, and I must match, because it's double entry bookkeeping, I must match them with an equal amount of debit entries. So, I go to the sales returns account. Sales returns account. And as I've credited my brand and Maloney, I must debit the sales returns account. Leave out the back with the 1200. So on September 30th, Sundries, I've got this from the sales returns book. 1200, leave out the back. And the back goes into the back account. The 120 goes into the debit side of the back account. September 30th, sales returns. Sales returns book, that's where I got this information, and I've debited that account. I now have matching debits and credits. You'll notice that the two debits total 1320 and the two credits total 1320. I match the debits with the credits. So I've posted the sales returns book. All that remains for me to do now is to balance McGrath and Maloney's accounts. So if we have a look at McGrath's account here, Remember how you balance an account? You find the difference between the two sides and you put that difference into the smaller side. So that's 4,400 less 550. That's 3850. 3850. So on the 30th of September, the balance to be carried forward is 3850. So September. 30, we can see here balance brought forward in McGrath's account, a debit balance brought forward. That's why they call it debtors. They usually have debit balances. McGrath is 3850. And in Maloney's case, we're a bit cramped for space here. 4950. And the balance must be 4180, I think. 4180, not 15, 4950. So September 30th, balance to be carried forward 4180. So on September, bring the balance forward now. The balance brought forward is 4180. So that Maloney owes us 4180. So for Brown, it's 3850, it's a debit balance. Maloney owes us 4,180. It's a debit balance. That's a credit balance in the sales account of 8,500, and that's a debit balance in the sales account of 1,200. And the balance in the back account at this moment is September 30th. The balance to be carried forward would be 730. It would be a credit balance to be carried forward here in September 30th. 
Balance got all seven properties. We owe it back on this. 740 euro. We will place those one, two, three, four, five balances in our trial balance, and you'll find the debits match the credits. Trial balance is another day's work. So we've posted the sales day book and the sales returns book for Nelson there. Sinead, 